So in this video, I'm going to explain to you what I mean by maintaining the abstraction when you paint, you know, painting with an abstract brush stroke, um, whatever you want to call it. I talk about this a lot in a lot of my videos, so I just thought I'd do a quick demonstration and show you exactly what I mean by that so there can be no um, misunderstanding. Um, I keep talking about this uh, reflective painting video that I'm going to do. I'm working on that. It's a pretty big, pro a bigger project and uh, still have some editing to do on that, so that video is still coming, but I thought this would be a quick one that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And so I had this canvas here, and I've actually had some paint on here which I've wiped off just so I can do this demonstration for you. Um, I don't need a perfect canvas, but here's this canvas, and I'm going to show you first of all what I mean by painting um, that, that, you know, when I first started painting portraits, if I was painting a background behind somebody and a, or a wall behind somebody, um, I might paint it like I'm going to show you now. And this would be not painting without an abstract brushwork. So let's say if I was going to paint something, you'll notice my brushwork is very regular. I'm just moving across. And this is not painting with an abstract stroke, but just sort of filling in. Let's say I was going to paint a little square of color there, and I wanted to move across and move from dark to light. Now here's my light, and I'll just sort of deliberately fill in my space, and I'm thinking about this logically. I'm not thinking about abstraction or anything else, and I just do a simple blend like that. And this is still going to have some abstract in it because you can't help it. But you'll notice that basically I'm just blending and making the transition um, from the light area to the dark area, and I'm just kind of going about it in a very simple way. So that's sort of like how you might paint if you were not painting with an abstract or if you were painting without uh, maintaining the abstraction. Uh, still going to be a little abstraction in there, but it's over blended. Um, and there's not. Now let me show you the difference. So now I'm going to paint, and this is like, you know, a, a background on a wall, like a wall being lit behind somebody. Or, um, and at the end of the end of this video, I'm going to show you some examples of that from Rembrandt and, some, and from some other artists, and you can see um, how they're maintaining the abstraction in their paintings. And that's where I learned it from. I noticed early on when I would compare my work the sergeant or somebody else, I was trying to figure out what in the world is it that makes it different. And this is uh, just something that I identified. And I've um, always tried to, uh, you know, keep the abstraction in my work when I paint. So now let me repaint this. And I'm just going to wipe this off and paint it again. But this time I'll try to paint it with an abstract brushwork. So we'll do the same thing. But notice now, I'm twisting my brush, I'm moving it around, I'm, I'm creating this abstract pattern of color, and I'm not, and one of the, I like to roll my brush, I like to move it around, I like to paint things that don't belong, like this spot down here. Um, but basically now, that would be the top corner, and then the bottom corner, I would fill in. And I would do the same thing, just kind of like abstract, rolling it around, painting. And, you know, it takes a while to learn how to do this. It's almost like you're painting in a way that doesn't, that you don't want to paint. You know, it doesn't really make any sense. So now that's a really lumpy uh, transition. But you can just poke at this. But instead of going in and blending it, I'm keeping the texture in. I'm not over blending, and I, now I'm just reducing some of that relief. And I can I can do this, you know, all the way to the point where it's almost a smooth transition, but I'm still maintaining the abstraction. So now you'll notice that's got all that abstraction in there, and I could tone it down even more. But if I was going to put a background in a painting, see how I'm I'm not just going to go across there. I'm going to move my brush in different ways. Now, if I was painting a table that had some horizontal lines in it, you know, some grain of wood or something, I might move my brush in a horizontal way, but I'm still maintaining that abstraction. I'm not just doing a simple, you know, 
horizontal brushwork, brush stroke. Um, so now let me just go a little further, and now I'm just going to really paint this whole canvas. And I'm, you know, this is really like an abstract painting, but visualize this as like a wall behind somebody in a portrait. And you can see how I go about doing it. So this is just, you know, without even thinking, I'm never just going to go start filling in. I'm going to leave it and paint in ways that I, you know, I like to roll my brush, drag my brush. I can scrape paint off the canvas and get color coming through. So you can attack it, but just do it in an abstract way. An abstraction can also be in color, so that if you, uh, you know, instead of just putting in blues, now I've got a little bit of an orange shift going on um, in my color, which is fine. I intentionally didn't just make it just as blue. I can go back to the blue. But just having that abstraction in color, meaning not just one monochromatic, you know, gray um, move, but having all this variation. So as I'm sitting here looking at this, and if you were painting this yourself, you know, when you're at your easel, you just see a big mess. But that's exactly what we want. That's what abstraction is, is. It's almost like, you know, when you look at it up close and out of context, um, it's just a big mess. But I'm... Um, see the abstraction going on? There's just so much of it. And we can take it out later if you feel like your, your background is too lumpy or whatever it is. But, you know, this will take some time. But you'll see how I'm going about this. And this is called maintaining the abstraction as I paint. It's almost as if you're painting in a way that um, you don't want to paint. You know, I'm making it ugly. It's easy to get rid of the, uh, you know, if I wanted to turn this into a perfectly smooth background, I could. But just even getting your color in like this, you know, in this, in this uh, abstract way, um, it's just going to make it look better in the end. They say about abstraction that if you look at a great piece of art, you can l zero in on any part of it and just frame it up. You can just zoom in on a background or a piece of a dress or whatever it is, and it's almost a painting in and of itself, you know, almost like an abstract painting. For some reason, the human eye loves to see abstraction. We see it in nature, in a pile of leaves. You see it in... in uh, you know, everywhere. And abstraction doesn't necessarily mean that there's no pattern. It just means that there's, um, you know, this uh, abstraction in, within the pattern. Sometimes I, what I'll do is I'll paint what I don't feel like painting. In other words, I'll do things like, here I have this light color. I'll just put it up there for no reason at all. And that's, again, 
going to create abstraction because it's not what you would normally do, which is to tend to put in way more pattern than is really there, or to maintain a you know a constant stroke instead of all these various different ways of doing it. So what I've got here is really, you know, almost to my eye just seems so wrong. I mean, just, there's just nothing to it. But I can now, if, if I have this big mess and I want to turn that into um, something that I like, it's easy at this point to just start reducing some of this relief and, and you know, blend it in more, continuing to do it in an abstract way but just reduce some of this relief, you know, and just deal with it in this abstract way, continuing to paint that way. As I solve these little issues, you know, if I see something I don't like and I think this is too bright or I don't want a wall that's got that much texture to it, you know, I'm just going to continue as I'm doing now, poking at it, reducing some of this relief you know, like if I see something that stands out real strong there, I can go in. But instead of just blending it in, I'm just, uh, you know, poking at it and doing all of this with this abstract brushwork. It's just all these different ways of painting. And just depending on how far, I love to drag my brush. This is one, this creates a great, you know, you keep that texture in there. You don't want it to get all blendy. And rolling your brush does that. So, I don't know how far I want to take this, but, you know, you can, I hope this is helpful, trying to understand what I mean by abstraction. And maybe it's hard for you to see the beauty in this, but if you can imagine this as a background behind somebody, it's just got a lot more interest in it. Got to have that texture. So now let's take a look at a few um, paintings uh, by Rembrandt and by John Singer Sargent, where I can show you their version of painting abstract. Um, if you take a look at this first one by Rembrandt, and then we zoom in, um, you can look at the not only the background, but even the wood itself. You know, it doesn't necessarily look like wood up close, but you can see all the abstraction, not only in the pattern and sort of, you know, the odd shapes and, and all the variation within it, but also there's an abstraction in color. You see the orange, the green, and it all mixed up there together. So anyway, I think that's a wonderful example of painting abstract. Now let's take a look at this one by Sargent this painting uh, entitled Gast, and if we look in on the um, in the background there, even in the sky, which is a, you know, basically would be a smooth blended transition, you would think, as you can see, as we zoom way in, you can see all the abstraction. There's nothing regular about it. Um, it there's colors and little blotches and all kinds of shapes that um, so we still see a texture there okay let's look at this last one here um, this is the painting of another one by Sargent and if you look down in the floor and in the background you can see all the uh, abstraction um, especially when we zoom in that background uh, in and of itself would be a wonderful abstract painting but you can see all the uh, you know very irregular brushwork 
So I hope that's helpful in understanding abstraction. You know, as you go forward, you know, it's just something that you'll see even, you know, regardless of what you paint, it can be a smooth apple in a still life. But if you get in there close, you're going to see that, that abstraction in the brushwork. So um, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. And by the way, I have my own art supply company right here in Austin, Texas, and we manufacture all of our own products. We have a whole line of paint and brush holders, palettes, color checkers, all sorts of things. So go check that out if you haven't at GenevaFineArt.com.